Hello everybody and welcome to this Budget 2010 video. As William Shakespeare once said, there has been much ado about nothing and this budget is no difference when all is said and done. There was more said than done, a very famous quote by our own Charlie Nichols. What we're going to cover today is the main budget points and how they may affect property investors, so I'm not going to go into the detail of the budget itself. We're going to look at how the numbers really look, how they work when in a uh, property example, and uh, a special request at the end of. Now these are my views. The depreciation and LAQ changes are mainly aimed at speculation and positive geared owners. So in other words, those buying and selling property and not paying tax, they will be trapped if you like, and positive geared owners, i.e. it's mostly about how the funds are distributed. That is the tax rates received on losses, so in other words when you're writing losses off through an LAQC, you're writing them off at a marginal tax rate of the highest earner, could be 39 cents in the dollar, 38 cents in the dollar as it is now. And then the tax rate paid on profits, once that property becomes positively geared and generally they are left in a company, it's removed from LAQ status and they're locked in there at either 30 cents in the dollar now or 33% in a trust. So in other words the government is trying to recoup that lost 5 cents in the dollar of tax and it generally has no effect on us as we are generally negatively geared and not in that positive situation. Personal tax rates changing from 1st of October and you can see those there. So the new rates over here dropping from 12.5% here down to 10.5% for the, up to 14,000, 17.5% up to 48. And that's where most New Zealanders will sit in this 17.5% uh, bracket, especially after we've written off a few properties. Um, and then it comes down here 30%, that was 33, and this was 38 down to 33. So quite significant drops there, as you'll see later on in our example. And the tax rate uh, from April uh, 2011 down to 28 cents in the dollar, that's very good too. GST, 1st of October 2.10, that's going to go up to 15%, which has been, I suppose, a bit of a blessing for us that as property investors we don't have to carry all the burden. And GST, it will be offset by increases in superannuation and also there will be changes to working for families uh, on how the rebate is calculated and what happens is the losses from the property was able to be taken off their income, their gross income, therefore their taxable income became quite a lot less, uh, therefore allowing them to receive more as a working for families rebate. That's going to cease unfortunately uh, after the end of the financial year. So there will be some loss of benefits to some people. We can work through that. If you have any questions on that, I'm happy to talk to you at any time. Depreciation from 1st of April 2011, there's going to be a removal of the 20% loading on new plant, i.e. new properties. Now this is nothing different than what I've been telling most of our clients for the last six months on what we felt was going to happen. So that will be removed, it doesn't make a lot of difference but there is some and a zero allowance for building depreciation uh, from budget day, May 20, so any new purchases after that time you will not be able to claim for uh, the 3% building write off. Now there could however be a way of claiming full building depreciation if the useful life of the building is not expected to be more than 50 years. And the useful life is a term as determined by the Commissioner of Inland Revenue. However, if you look at your code compliance certificate, you will actually see in there most of them have a useful life amount put in there by the council. For the balance of the 2010-2011 year, there will be no change to the current depreciation that you are claiming. Those with no chattels valuation or incorrect depreciation schedule may find things a little more difficult financially. Now this is why it has been important that you employ a experienced property accountant. Now if all your depreciation has been written off at 3% under the building heading, you may not be able to claim any further depreciation post April 2011 without some structure change. So in other words, if it's all been written off in one lump sum, basically depreciation will cease for you. 
there are no circumstances where a chattels and fixtures valuation was not recommended by OPM or KPCL. This has been part of our presentation for seven, five, six, seven years now. Some examples of why clients might be in this position are as follows. Client's accountant has advised against a chattels and fixtures valuation. Crazy, I say. Existing investment property which was owned pre-OPM. So this is a common, a common cause where someone's already owned a property and they haven't done the chattels valuation. Unfortunately, an older property will basically end up with no depreciation from April 2011. And a non-property accounted ignoring the chattels and fixtures valuation altogether. Again, another common problem with some accountants. I've spoken to an accountant since the budget on restructuring and we're also looking into limited and general partnerships as well. So we may be able to find a, an option for uh, changes in the near future. And we'll look at what the future of LAQCs are. Are they going to be suitable in, in future years? They are still currently, so we'll keep doing it until such a time as we look at the other. General partnerships or limited partnerships are rather expensive. We may be able to transfer a property into another entity, so a full chattels valuation could be done uh, with the increased depreciation payout covering the restructure uh, expenditure. So this is an option we're looking at at this stage. Um, however, the properties need to be less than five years old, otherwise there will be no chattels depreciation. And the door may still be open for the building and chattels and fixtures values to be written into the sale and purchase agreement. This is where the book value goes into the agreement and it can sometimes completely eliminate depreciation recovered. So in other words, you may be selling the property from one company to another or from yourself to a company, then you put the book values in the sale and purchase agreement and, and there is, the, as I say, no tax depreciation or depreciation recovered. However, this doesn't assist you from a chattels write-off position. So if you're buying a property with a low value of chattels, if the book value is low, to avoid depreciation recovery, and we want it high for better tax write-offs. So sometimes it doesn't always work out favourably. So the newer the property, the better. As I mentioned before, there must be five years or less for this to be applicable. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's fine. We can discuss it in person. Now, you'll be informed if there's any way around re-evaluating the depreciation claim on your property. And as I said, it's not going to affect many. Most of our clients do not have this problem. And the doomsayers, as many out there, as you're probably aware, claim that the higher income earners receive more tax benefits than the lower income earners. Let's look at a, a true example here. A married couple, two children, $50,000 of income. After working for families, medical subsidies and all other subsidies they get, they pay just $1,500 tax out of that. Whereas a couple on double that income, $27,000 tax. So there is quite a difference there. And that's from Mr. Don Brash, uh, ex-Reserve Bank Governor. This is the end of Part 1. Please search for Budget 2010 Part 2 to continue watching the video.